Hey folks, it's Ben Jungbeck again and today on request I will show the proper chords to Django's Waltz or Montagne Saint Geneve because the melody is taught a lot on YouTube. There are a lot of tabs and stuff and a lot of examples where you can watch it. Uh, and But the chords are not discussed so often. So I will now play a chorus as a demonstration or I will play part A and part B as a demonstration because there's a lot of repetition so I won't play the whole tune. I will play one part A, one part B. And then we check all the details. This song has an introduction, and I will play that introduction first, and then heading, and then I will head into A. One, two, three, two, two, three. <laughs> B in that tune is um, it starts with the after that with the dominant of G because the whole tune is in the key of E minor and now part B starts with the dominant chord of G major that means D and apt actually it's only just the change of you know D dominant and G but there are some options to play it you know this is this it goes like this and then we get the option to play G sharp diminished some players play that and they go like it's also fitting because it's actually a dominant chord to the A minor and you could see the D also as, as a 2-5 Okay, and this is basically it. So it's a pretty easy waltz and a lot of other waltzes um, like Indifference, for example, or Bistrofada by Stefan Rem Rembel. They share these uh, chord changes of part A and part B or in some waltzes part C can vary, but um, the waltz is very traditional and shares the same chords. So the intro, there are two versions. The one that I played before and the one of uh, Roman. There is a very old version of Roman playing uh, Montagne Saint Geneve, which is always also very beautiful. And he plays um, E minor, C dominant seven, and then the two five. So it starts with a regular E minor chord, no, no nothing special about it. Then uh, the Roman version would be. C dominant 7 9 with C, E, B flat, and D. And then we go from F sharp, half diminished. That can be played with the thumb up here. Then it's, it looks like an A minor campfire chord with the thumb up in the second fret, and the A string is muted. Or you can play it with the middle finger, the F sharp. Then still the A string is muted, and you got E, A, and C. And then for the B dominant chord, I play it pretty regular B dominant 7 chord that you learn in the first guitar books. So this is one version. So you can go like... So sometimes instead of the B dominant 7, the lead player will play this little melody that goes like... So very easy. You go from B, B, C, B, A, G, F sharp, A, E. So you have, you have the intro. 
intro like Let me mention that in the beginning, um, to, uh, to um, save some time, I played the waltz pretty fast. It's a very difficult one. It's more difficult than it seems. When you start practicing it, you realize that it's more difficult than, than you probably thought. Um, usually when you see or practice waltzes like La Gitano, if you haven't practiced them, you think like, wow, La Gitano is very difficult. But actually, to my mind, La Gitano is easier than Jungle's waltz even. It's very difficult at high pace. So sometimes it's played very slow. This is also true for the version that Roman played. So, okay, you got this one. And then, um, so after this intro, the second intro that I played, instead of C, dominant seven, this is another option you can also play. Just E minor with a G in the bass. Therefore, you just put the pinky on the lower E string and then play the same. And sometimes for the F half diminished chord, I just leave out the C. This sounds also good. This is an F minor 7, uh, 11 chord then. And this is also okay. So you can go like. Well, also sounds good. These are the two options for the intro. And then we got very long E minor. And what I like to do is play like a country guitarist, this alternating bass like. when you're in a duo and there is no bass player that sounds very nice or you can just play um, E and B as bass line and then when I play the B I do like so I'm alternating between B and F sharp on the E string and you can use to E minor you could go like this like this is very nice and working very well but of course if you want more the muted sound of the walls like you would choose probably the bar chord E minor up into seventh fret and alternating the bass between E and B seven up here and that gives you some option concerning the dim chord so you could do like and now so I go from I go to the D sharp dim which is a substitution for B dominant seven so you can play a bass movement with chords B dominant seven this is actually the pretty common bar chord. I won't explain it. I think you got it. Then you got the D sharp diminished with D sharp. Ring finger is playing the seventh fret A. Then the first finger is playing C fifth fret and the pinky is playing F sharp. And you can move that upwards into the ninth fret with the root. When I uh, name the fret, I'm always, you know, um, pointing my concentration on the bass note. This is easier, you know. Don't think that this is in the eighth fret for the first finger is in the eighth fret. It's it's easier to think like okay, my root F sharp here with the middle finger is in the ninth fret. So that's the position I'm in because I like to see it from the root and not from the um, place on the fretboard where my first finger lies. That's probably true if you uh, if you if you practice scales. I don't know, but actually it's more um, it's 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 better for your thinking when you think in the root and so we're in the ninth fret with F sharp, 10th fret, C with the ring finger on the D string, first finger is playing D sharp and then we got A up here. So obviously these are exactly the same notes and this just turned around. We got like here D sharp, A, C, F sharp and here we got F sharp, C, D sharp and A. So and you can move along these new chords even down, you know, always in minor thirds. So, and then you can go like... And then you have a bass movement and return to E. What I also like to do is maybe I go up one time, like B7, and then 
then I go down to boss. Therefore, after the bar chord, I play B on in seven with F sharp in the bass. And sometimes I leave out the pinky, just play, play these lower five strings while the A string is muted. With F sharp, muted A string, of course, D sharp and A. The B string is about to ring, the E string not, and then we're back in E minor. So then the second half of A starts with, starts with um, E minor. And then we go to e, e major or E major 7. And what I like to do when I'm in the open position is playing the E major like this and then I play this inversion of an E minor 7. This is a nice chord. So you got and then you can go back to A minor here or to A minor 6 up here or even bar chord up here, it doesn't matter. So this chord is like G sharp on the lower E string, A string is muted, then we got the A on the D string, then uh, the pinky is playing natural B, fourth fret on the G string, and the mi middle finger is playing D, which would be the seventh. Sorry, <laughs> like this. And then I'm heading for A minor, no matter if it's up here. and B dominant 7. You can play this normal bar chord or you can play of course one of the more idiom idiomatic voicings in Gypsy Swing would be that one. My thumb is now playing F sharp. The pinky is playing the fifth C sharp. The first finger is playing E. The ring finger is playing B flat or A sharp whatever you like to call it and the middle finger is playing C sharp like this and then or you can even play this one. This would also be a typical dominant 7 voicing for gypsy jazz players. The thumb is playing F sharp, the middle finger is playing C sharp and F sharp, then the first finger is playing the third, B flat, and the pinky is playing E. So you go like the whole part, let's say second half of A would be like this. what I basically play. Sometimes when I'm up here playing the E minor bar chord and then switching to E major or E um, major uh, E dominant 7, then I play the E dominant 7 like this, which is the pretty typical E dominant 7 chord. It's like if you know this campfire C major triad, you add the pinky on the G string to make it C dominant 7 and move it up C sharp D, D sharp E to the 7th fret and then you got E dominant 7 which is also working pretty good. So you got this and it gives you the opportunity to alter alternate the bass here. And then you can play F sharp the same way you played E dominant 7, two frets up and then your B dominant 7. Now I left out the fifth. This is absolutely fine. And mute the A string back to E minor, like this. So when I play it up here, um, the second half of A would be like this. Now E dominant 7 to A minor. You can also play the triad. I like instead of the bar chord, I like to play the triad like this. I leave out the E string, it's muted because of the position of my um, left hand. My first finger is muting instead of uh, playing. And then I have the thumb playing the root, and I play with the ring finger the fifth, with the pinky the octave, so I got the power chord like this, and then the first finger is playing C and E. So you go from... from. second half of part A. Basically like this. I mean all the chords give you a lot of opportunities to use substitutions and stuff. There is something um, that I did I think in the instruction was instead of playing E minor 
the very last E minor, the, the E minor after the A minor chord, one time I used C half diminished, which is um, the same chord than E minor 6. When you have E minor 6, you have an E minor chord and add a C sharp. This is C E minor 6. So, and this is just a different voicing for it, the C half diminished chord, because it has, it contains the same notes. We got here E, B, another E, G, C sharp, and E. And here we got like C sharp, G, B, and E. You can even play the low E string as a bass note, but I didn't do that. And the high E string is also fitting because it's there already. So you can play after the A minor. I start here again. what you can do all the time is you can experiment with this when you're in a duo situation and there is no um, no bass player you can try to add some bass lines and uh, bass line playing is a very good uh, exercise also for solo playing because you concentrate on the important note and so you learn on the lower strings what you should also learn on the upper strings for soloing and you get away from scales and you think more in the chords for example you can go from the E minor to the B with a little bass line. You could play like... And you can add these little bass lines while you play only one, two, three, two, two, three, one, two, three, two, two, three. And it's absolutely okay to leave the chord at a certain point to go on with your bass line. And all you have to do when you play it in the open position is take a look at the scale in the open position. So you got here probably E minor, like... And of course, as soon as the B dominant 7 chord appears, there is a D sharp instead of a D in that scale, which would make it E harmonic minor, but I don't think that way. I just think the way I'm in E minor, and when I play B dominant 7, I, here's a, my, there's something wrong with the guitar, don't mind, I'll probably hear it, don't mind. So I, th I say like, well, okay, D sharp, here it is. And then I play this instead of the D string, but you know, for example, this D sharp is leading to E. You, you could play like... Stuff like that, you know. And the same thing is of course working when you're heading for A minor. You can go like... You can take the chord that I just mentioned before. But instead of that one, you can also walk along the fretboard with dim chords like... second half of A, like on E major, G sharp then, and then E minor, and this is a played like this. Middle finger is playing G sharp, A string is muted, the first finger is playing F, B flat, and D, but the B flat is not to be heard because the ring finger is playing natural B in the fourth fret. And you can also move this chord like the D sharp dim that we had before across the fretboard in minor thirds. You can also fine, you know, when you try to do that. I can make an example of that using the dim chord. I start with the second half of A. this. Well, this is pretty everything concerning part A. And part B is very easy. The chords that I'm usually playing is the D dominant 7, the way that I played the other dominant 7 chords before. Nothing special about it. In Gypsy Swing, you play also a lot of times a D dominant 7 9 chord. Like and the D dominant 7 9 is special when you cover all six strings. In that case, you would play with the first finger, with the middle finger. A and D at the same time, the 
first finger is playing F sharp and the ring finger is covering C, E and A. But you can do that like... But at the same time you can also go and alternate the bass. Because it's a very short moment actually. Right after that we're heading for the G. playing the E flat. I like the E flat dominant 7 better than the G sharp diminished that I uh, was um, talking about in the beginning of the video. So the G chord, you can play two G chords that are absolutely fine. One that I like a lot and play a lot is just the G triad. With the thumb up here, playing G in the bass, third fret on the low E string, and then you got D, G, B, and so it's pretty much a normal bar chord, but you leave out, by the way, you hold down the strings, you leave out the high E string. You could play it as well, but um, having the second octave here is not very idiomatic for gypsy jazz. So this one's better. And then you, le you just, um, when you play this one, the change is very easy. And when you play this one, then I would suggest playing the very idiomatic gypsy G6-9 chord with G, D, G, net, uh, so G, D, G, B, E, and A. So this is also very easy because obviously you got like this. So and these are all the chords actually about Montagne Saint Geneva. I hope that video helped you and um, subscribe to my channel. There are a lot of chord explanations for the most important gypsy swing tunes. I hope you like it and see you soon. Bye.